Having addressed the issues of fracking, natural gas, of solar and wind energy, it is now a progression that should be made to hydropower or water energy. Now, some people would say that would be relatively simple. And the truth of the matter is, it is. But let's call it water energy rather than hydro energy because that makes you think solely of dams and of other areas where you would have natural waterfalls. And the truth is, this is one of the best ways that you have at this time of exploiting such energy. Where the capacity for exploiting water energy has not yet occurred is to be able to actually take power from the oceans from the tides, most especially in the areas that you are going to want to protect in the future from flooding, as it will be necessary to build walls in some areas to prevent flooding, these same walls can be used to capture water and in essence, force it in order to create another source of hydropower, or simply to allow such a barrier to float with the water can capture energy as well in an alternate form as the flotation device lowers building pressure. Now, another source of energy that people often think about when they think of water is automobiles that are powered by the use of hydrogen when the oxygen and hydrogen is split from the molecule of water. Now, you would think that this would be a very good source of power, but this is one source that actually would not be encouraged. Rather, we would encourage you to look towards electric vehicles, and there is a reason for this. Think of how your atmosphere is actually made up of various elements. You breathe oxygen. Approximately 21% of your atmosphere is oxygen. If you go to a hospital and need oxygen, you will not be given pure oxygen. You will be given air with more oxygen in it. You will get close to pure oxygen, perhaps, if you want to utilize such for welding in an acetylene torch. So if 21% of your atmosphere is oxygen, and the other 78% of your atmosphere is nitrogen, and you're left with only 1% that makes up all of the other gases, and there are multiple gases in your atmosphere. Just think, with all of the automobiles and other things that you are doing that creates carbon monoxide, and carbon dioxide and various forms of toxic gases. These still count for less than 0.03% of 
possibly of what's in your atmosphere. So you have 1% of your atmosphere that is a multitude of other gases. So what happens if you start altering the balance of your atmosphere? Now you would say if you are just simply dealing with hydrogen and oxygen, but what happens when you start actually doing this because you are then working within small margins and the life on your planet actually uses these various gases in ways that you wouldn't expect, in ways that science hasn't even bothered to think about. Even your body needs these small trace amounts of gases in the air that you breathe. And if you alter this, if you start altering this balance, which is what is occurring right now with global warming, and think, you are altering less than 1% of your atmosphere, less than, by small, small, insignificant amounts with all of the cars you are running, with all of the factories that you have going, with all of the pollution you are making, you are actually making an infinitesimally small change and yet it is creating global warming. What happens if you begin to change other balances of the gases? This is just something you do not want to do because the potential hazards for both health and risk such as sunburn, cancer, problems with breathing, blood supply, problems with nutritional absorption to humans, animals, and plants is just to great. You're already doing enough to muck up your atmosphere. You're already harming your air enough. So it is important that you choose a power source that does not alter this. So the main takeaway that we would give you when speaking of water power is that it is predominantly a mechanical source. It sometimes ties with other sources of power, nuclear, coal, so that steam is created to create a mechanical driver. It is sometimes utilized by running through turbines, but ultimately water power is a kinetic form of energy and should be used as such and not something that should be tried to manipulate because in trying to manipulate your water chemically or in the atomic levels you can do more damage than benefit to both the earth and to humanity itself. So while it may seem like a silly thing to say, water power is just that, water wheels. It can be used to grind, it can be used to move things, it can be used for a lot of purposes. And water serves many, many purposes on your earth, and life, as you know it, cannot exist without it. And while we speak of the potential harms, you have to understand that the earth does try to maintain its own balance, and that the oceans and the air work in conjunction with each other 
to manage to maintain a balance of oxygen and hydrogen as is needed. But if you intentionally start utilizing a form or mode of energy that would then be used in greater and greater and greater capacities even to the point of using such for power plants, it will start to alter your environment and it will alter your environment just as much as putting exhaust from any other car alters your environment. You are worried about the exhaust from carbon products. Well, you should also be just as worried about this if you do it on a large scale. Such is harmless, totally harmless in the small experimental scale in which it has been done. But then, one charcoal grill does no damage at all. If that was the only thing that was happening in your atmosphere, there would be no problem. It wouldn't be exacerbating global warming, but when you have as much as you have, it is a problem. So take this away from what we are telling you. Water power is a viable source of energy, but it is just good old fashion design and construction for kinetic energy like it has always been. We leave you with blessings and with peace. Peace be with each of you.